Manager and Spokesperson here at the City of Miramar. Thank you for joining us for another episode in Conversations with Mayor Messam. We have a very special treat for you today. This evening, the mayor is joined by four high-performing athletes in track and field. These athletes will be competing in the Olympic qualifiers this Saturday at the Miramar Invitational at the Anson Sport Complex. And this is presented by the Anson Foundation. The athletes that are joining us today are Mr. Justin Gatlin, and he's a five-time Olympic medalist in the 100-meter sprint. We also have Mac Rogers, 100-meter sprint champion in the Pan Am Games. We have Ajay Wilson, and she's a U.S. record holder in the 800-meter race. And we also have Natoya Gould, who is a middle-distance runner in the 800-meter from Jamaica. We also have Mr. T.C. Campbell, from TC Management, and he is the organizer of this Saturday's Miramar Invitational. Welcome, everyone. Glad to have you here in the city of Miramar. Glad that you're joining our mayor today. The mayor and, the, and our athletes are going to be taking your questions, so please feel free to type them in the comment section, and we will get to them during our q and A. And now turn things over to Mayor Messam. Mayor Messam, you have the floor. Thank you, Sean, and good evening to our viewers. Thanks again for tuning in to Conversations with Mayor Wayne Messam. You know, I'm very excited about our special guest this evening and getting a chance to get to know each of them just a little bit better. You know, as a runner myself, it's always great to learn from the experts and to get tips on not only on how to perform better in sports, but performing at a high level in our daily lives. We have athletes that will be joining us for the Miramar Invitational that will take place this weekend at Anson Sports Complex. It is such a pleasure to welcome all of our track athletes competing this weekend. Miramar is really your Florida destination for sports, and it's great when we can host top sporting events at our fa uh, facility at the Anson Sports Complex. Many of you may know some of our darlings of track that grew up at our at Anson Sports Contract uh, uh, track field. Um, Brianna Williams and Khalifa St. Ford under the, the tutelage of Otto Bolden. You know, we're just so proud of what has been produced right here in the city of Miramar. You know, we have Mr. T.C. Campbell, who is the promoter and organizer of this invitational. And I really want to ask Mr. Campbell, why did you decide to host this event in Miramar? And what can our community expect from Saturday's race? Well, well, Mayor, first of all, thank you for having me on your program. Um, it's really a pleasure and honor for me to be on there. Yes, um, I've been meaning to, to try to host a meet for, like I said, the better part of 25, 30 years. Um, I've traveled around the world with track and field. I consider it not a job, but a way of life. You know, it's what I grew up in you know, straight out of college. And I, I love the sport and I'm very passionate about it. And I was very fortunate enough to run in, into your facility because my parents lived in Coral Springs. And I was visiting my parents and just met some folks and they were, they were telling me about your facility that came down and I just fell in love with it. It's such a fantastic place to host a track and field event. You know, in my travels around the United States, I found that most of the facilities are controlled by public institutions, or excuse me, um, academic institutions. And so it's not really available to host an international event of, of this magnitude. Okay, so when I found out that this facility was owned by the city, I got in touch with, your, with the city manager, who's also a track man. I was very fortunate to hear that. So I'm so excited to know that the, the, the mayor is, is a track man, the city manager is a track man. Hey, we got, we got a big family here. So, you know, and, and like I said, when I spoke to my friends around the world, they, they agreed that they would help me to get this meet started. We, don't, we didn't have a bunch of money to get started, but I got great support, you know, from some coaches like Dennis Mitchell down in Orlando and, 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 and uh, Coach Derek uh, uh, Thompson in Philadelphia and so forth. These are two guys that really stepped in to, to give me a hand here, and I would be eternally grateful to them. And I would like the fans out there to, to log into uh, MiramarInvite.com to get more information on, on that event. You know, ticket sales, please come out, buy some tickets. That would help us a lot. Appreciate you guys. So please, please come out and support us on Saturday. It's going to be a great event, and we have some great athletes here, and it's really going to be a treat European style. 
Thank you, Mary. Thank you, TC. Great, great, great. It sounds like such a wonderful event. And let me tell you, the community is already calling. People are wondering how to get their tickets, and we know it's going to be great. Now, we want to get to know the athletes, and that's really who they're coming to see, right? So let's start out with Justin. Justin, uh, can you... Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? We already know your impressive track record. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what we can expect from you this Saturday. Well, I've been around a long, long time, but um, I haven't have really had a chance to really run in Florida as a professional athlete. Um, and this is a great opportunity. Um, I'm a Florida boy. So be able to come out here and run, you know, in front of my family, fans and friends. It's a great opportunity for myself. And also Team USA is gonna be doing a great job. Um, I'm happy about that. I think that we're gonna put on a great show. And I know the mayor asked earlier, we're gonna pull out all the stops or we're gonna wait for Olympic trials. This is the opener. We're gonna pull out all the stops. Can't wait, can't wait, can't <laughs> wait. Thank you so much, Justin, thank you. Uh, Mike, how about you? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what can we expect to see this Saturday? Um, I've been around a long time as well. I guess me and Gattis are like the old vets. We, we still going. <laughs> 15 years of counting. Uh, I'm very, very excited to be here in Florida. I haven't raced in Florida much either. So this is big for the sport and, and for everybody. And, you know, when me and Justin get together, it's, it's, it's like World War Three out there. But, you know, we're going to put it, we're going to put on the show. We're going to do everything we need to do to put this meet on the map and for the years to come. Listen, that, that's hilarious. It's World War III out there. So we'll get ready for it on Saturday. Ajay, you're going to be part of this whole World War III out there. Um, what do you think? Tell us a little bit about yourself and what can we expect to see from you on Saturday? Uh, I haven't been in the game as long as Justin and Mike, but I'm in my ninth season. And um, I feel like I've finally learned how to train, how to treat my body. So I'm looking forward to this race to kind of put together all the stuff that we've been working on this year and also just build toward hopefully a super long career like <laughs> Justin and Mike. So I'm excited to escape the Philly chilly weather. We're slowly starting to warm up, but my, I'm excited to come to Florida to get some sun. Awesome. We welcome you here. We have a lot of sunshine to go around and we have Natoya. Natoya, go ahead. Tell us a little bit about yourself. If you're looking forward to Saturday, what can we expect? Your turn. I am Natoya Gould and I am from Jamaica and I'm also the national record holder for Jamaica and I am looking forward to compete with the great RJ Wilson. You know, we always compete with each other from she was a junior and I was my last year as a junior. So I'm looking forward for a great race, nice weather, you know, great fans and be able to see, you know, track and field getting into it again because I missed racing. I missed seeing all those person's competing, so I'm looking forward for it. So Mayor Messon, we have some people who are Florida natives. We have some people who are dying to come out of the cold and get some sunshine. It's a it's an energetic group of individuals who are bursting with energy and ready for Saturday. Mr. Mayor, can you take it away and just get involved and let's see what we have in store for us? Well, you know, I've been looking forward to this uh, this session all we ever since we uh, spoke with TC and we thought about the concept of bringing some of our great athletes um, and introducing them to our community. And I guess I'll just start uh, first with uh, with Justin. You know, um, you know, we've watched you over. If I can think of one word that um, when I see you and, and just how you've performed over the years, I think about perseverance. You know, we've seen you, you know, perform at such a high level. We've watched you in your valleys and your peaks, and you're still holding strong. So uh, just just share with the community about what does it mean, you know, that on a comeback year, you know, you guys have been in the game for so long and still being able to compete at a high level. So what can you share with our residents in terms of what does it take to compete at a high level for such a long time and so much consistency? Um, you, you love it. You love coming out and competing. You love putting on a great show for the audience. You, um, I guess the part you really don't love is the training, but once we get the training out of the way and competition is there, which what we have in Miramar, it'll be great competition. I think we're going to put on a great show for the city, not only the city, but for the state. Um, and when the great shows happen, they tend to be a trend and you'll see athletes coming back again and again. 
And that's what our objective is to put on a great show so this can happen again and again. Mayor Messam, you're muted. Oh, I'm back. Yeah, so, so the softball question I have is, well, what is that meal, that, that favorite meal you like to eat right before the race that puts you in that, you know, to feel like you give the, the right energy burst or something that may not upset the stomach because, you know, race, uh, race day jitters may come in. But what is, it, what is it that you love to eat right before the race? Oh, man. Uh, I've, been around, I've, been around, I've been around 19 years, so it's, it's evolved over time. Um, I remember first that we used to be steak and eggs. Um, that was a little heavy, so then it, it's it's gotten down to uh, protein shakes and chicken and rice or something like that, depending on what day, what time the race is. So the race is going to be midday, so I'm gonna have breakfast already, and then we'll have like a light lunch, maybe a salad or maybe a small sandwich to be able to sit on my stomach and use that energy to go out there and put on a great show. Awesome, awesome. So, so Natoya, you know, um, you know, coming from Yad, right, from Jamaica. You know, Miramar has one of the largest Jamaican diaspora populations in the world. It, it's, it's, it's believed to be the fifth largest. Uh, and so it's a lot of West Indians that live here, a lot of uh, large Jamaican uh, population here. So um, there will be a lot of fans cheering for you. Um, so talk, talk to us about, you know, just the, 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 the history, the the, the heritage and just the pedigree of Jamaican runners, you know, uh, typically, you know, we hear about, you know, the sprint events, but when you start talking about the 800, which I still call it a sprint because you can't, you can't hold back. And, you know, I'm sure you and Ajay would say the same, but, but talk about just, um, you know, representing Jamaica and just the competitive nature, because when you think about track, it's always team USA and Jamaica, especially in the sprints that are always drawing the largest crowds and produces the best times? Well, the thing is, everyone wants to be a sprinter because as Justin said, he doesn't like the training because it's hard, but you know, you go there, you have to train to be able to compete well. And if you come from Jamaica, you know, there's a lot of persons that can actually run longer distance than they can sprint. But everyone try to shy away from the long distance and try to be a sprinter when everybody <laughs> cannot sprint, you know? So I'm one of the few that, <sighs> Lord help me, I'm one of the few that just say, okay, I can do it. So just go and do it. And here I am today as a Jamaican middle distance runner, still bring the torch. Hopefully there will be somebody to come after I'm gone to bring the torch as well and say, listen, Jamaica is not only about sprinting, but also there's middle distance and long distance because come on, we all are from Africa. We see all the Kenyans, Ethiopians, all, they, all of them, they can run long distance and we do have a little bit of that DNA in there. So I know we can run long just like anybody else. So, you know, I just hope that other runners in Jamaica will hold up the torch and say, listen, I'm going to try and run longer because come on. I, I feel left out when it's trials, when our trials is the only trials that have a, a, a one round and then I have to go and compete with the great Asia Wilson. They have three rounds. So I need to see more Jamaicans come and, you know, be able to compete and give me that challenge that I need to be able to, you know, race on the higher, you know, so I need, I need that competition. So that's why I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to come be here in the U.S. to compete against some of the best in the world, and I'm not gonna shy away from competing because I need it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, Mike, you know, uh, we got a chance to speak briefly uh, before we went live, and you know, we we shared about you. Or, you know, you're just an athlete, you know, playing football, playing basketball, running track. And especially like these days, you know, you have a lot of youth sports where a lot of the coaches just try to make an athlete just one track. It's only baseball. It's only football. It's only, and I'm sure when you look at yourself, who has been able to, you know, compete at a high level in all these different sports. But how did you transition to saying that, okay, track is what I'm, is my, is my passion. This is my way forward. This is what I compete best in. So uh, walk us through that process and, and what are you expecting this weekend? 
I mean, to be honest, I just I just fell in love with it. Like when you when you like something, you like something. You don't, you don't. You know, I just got out there and just began to learn my craft. And when I learned it and started getting good at it, you can't do nothing but stick with it. So um, I'm just blessed to just have the talent to to do that. I'm still learning my event, and I've been in the game 15 years. I'm learning from guys like Justin, learning from guys like Usain Bolt, Tyson Gay, people like that that was before me. So. I'm just soaking it all up, and hopefully this weekend I can put something together for everybody to remember. So what's that swag song? What what would be in the earbuds right before you get into the blocks, getting hyped up, you know, because you got your boy Justin that's going to be on your right or to your left, and, you know, <laughs> you know he's just coming. You know, he's not going to leave it on the track. So so what's that hype song you got in the, in the earbuds, you know, right before the race? Oh, I said this week it'd probably be like since this my boy DMX, you know, X gonna give it to you. I, I gotta listen to that this week, you know. You know, he been in the hospital, so I'm gonna listen to something like that this weekend. Cool, cool, cool. Now, Ajay, I just love that name, by the way, you know. Uh, but we know that don't let the sweet name fool you, right? When you get that out there on the track. So, you know, you 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 know, as girls and ladies in the sport, you know, there's so much. One thing I would say about track, you know, the, 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 the gaps between men athletics and women's sports, um, I think that gap is more narrow when it comes to track and field uh, because there's just as much, if not more, excitement about the women's field. And when you think about as a woman, we just caught out of uh, Women's History Month and as a woman performing, um, what, do you, what, what do you bring to the track in terms of your womanhood? in terms of your uh, athleticism and just what women brings to sports in general? Yeah, I, I think for, for the longest, I always just looked at myself as an athlete. When I was younger, I was quite the tomboy and I, I didn't like the distinction of, oh, you're a girl playing with the guys or you're a girl racing with the boys. Um, and as I've gotten older, I've just realized kind of the strength and um, poise and just amazing, um, qualities and things that you learn from being a woman that I've translated to the track. So some of those things are being super dedicated, not that the guys don't hold it down, but I definitely think that as women having to juggle, you know, family life, having to juggle your profession, being an athlete, um, it's definitely a different duality that, you know, only kind of, we have the, the awesome tact of, of handling, um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, when, when people watch us compete, I hope that they do see me as an athlete. I hope that they're valuing my performances just like, as they are the men's. And I hope that as society as a whole, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see that more and more. Um, even with the past NCAA tournament, we saw how, how we were treated differently. So anytime I can have an opportunity to kind of point that out and you know, remind people that stories are just as important, our performances are just as valuable, um, is a, a great opportunity. So hopefully, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to put just as great of a show as the guys. Well, you know, we're reading, we're rooting for both you and Natoya, especially in the 800, you know, as you progress and to uh, get ready for, for Tokyo. And it, it may be, you know, you, you may be the top two in those finals coming in for the gold medal. So uh, we just never know. We're just glad to both have you both here. And this is a question for both of you. You know, when I was growing up and looking at the, the Olympics in the 80s, you know, we have perhaps almost every female sprinter's idol, you know, um, you know, the, the track diva with the long fingernails and the long hair and the style. And we know, and what's her name? Lojo. That's right, Flojo. So she brought fashion to track. You know, you really haven't seen much of that, you know, since her. I'm not sure maybe there may be some rules against in terms of dress and attire. But if there's not, have you ever thought about bringing some of some of your uh, individualism in terms of your style, in terms of your uniforms? I know when you get when you compete in terms of. Um, uniform uh, is running unattached or running as a professional athlete do you flare it up a little with your with your uniforms and what you decide to wear or does it really even matter i kind of like i alluded to earlier initially it was very 
I'm here to do business. I'm here to do a job. That's that's what I'm doing when I come on the track. So I didn't want anything to distract from um, my performance um, in that regard. And maybe like my first two years, I was notorious for like crazy like ponytails that just like weren't well brushed because I didn't pack any type of hair products. And after a while, my sisters were like, yeah, you got to get it together just so you can um, do your hair. So I think as I've kind of like found um, my sense of style, um, I've kind of let that spill over into the track a little bit. I might put a little foundation on. I have one of my favorite earrings that I always wear um, that says love. Um, and there's not really much with the uniform that you can mixed up but maybe a pair of socks or pop my nails or something like that to just give it a little flair and 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 feel good and look good at the same time yeah good. now my next question really is for any one of you um you know the the world was impacted by the pandemic with COVID 19 it basically shut everything down especially athletics and um, it really interrupted the track season in fact it interrupted the Olympics, uh, pushed it back a year. Um, how has COVID-19 impacted your training? Um, how did you get through the, the past season in terms of the adjustment and not been, and basically missing a season um, to compete? So if you can just share with us just personally, how, how did you cope? How are you coping with COVID-19? Um, and, 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 and how has it impacted the sport and you personally in training? I'll call you out. Okay, let's go, Mike. All right, ready. All right. So for me, I live in Texas, so we were really locked down. No park, no weight room, no track, no nothing. We was basically inside, inside. So um, I guess it gave me some time to put some things into perspective. If I really wanted to, you know, go all the way in this year for the Olympics, like sitting down, giving my body up some rest, because you know I raced a lot. I, I did a lot. You know, I was out there enjoying myself on the track and it's like it gave my body a little chance to heal up and get right for this upcoming year to be at my best what about you justin um pretty similar story i mean we couldn't get to any track we couldn't get to any park we found ourselves running on patches of grass near retention ponds just to get it in it felt like we was in a twilight zone mm -hmm. uh we were training non-stop and each week there were meets getting canceled. So we were literally packed, ready to go. And all our plans fell apart, just crumbled right before us. So we trained, 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 trained all the way through just to one, just to run one race, just to justify all the training that we had. And even then he was all banged up from training for so long. Mm -hmm. So I think that it gave us a peace of mind to be able to rest our bodies and really kind of gather our thoughts back together and really kind of center ourselves to find our hunger for this season. And I think that's what this season's all about. It's about all of us not backing down. Like, this is what we're here for. We're here to run. You know, all this, obviously we have challenges when it comes to competitors, but this is the ultimate challenge. Like, our livelihood, our dreams, everything that we wanted to be in life and wanted to achieve is on the table now. So we have to go out there and compete no matter what. That's amazing. So, so TC, uh, question for you, you know, um, obviously, you shared with us in your opener about the concept, the vision for um, this event. Can you share with our viewers how, how can they um, get a ticket for this event? Um, and what is your ultimate vision for the mayor of invitation? Okay. Um, again, I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, because without you, half of this wouldn't have been possible. So, again, I really take my hat off to you and taking your time and, and putting your staff to work and having them really, really help to make this a reality. Um, the best way to get tickets is, I think, is Ticketmaster. You can call them, or you can go to uh, miramarinvite.com and look at the website, the Miramar website, and from there, or you can go on, on your city website, your office website, they have information there as well about ticketing, but if they go to miramarinvite.com, you'll be able to see the time schedule, what time the meet's going to start, because we have some pre-events that are going to be very good. You know, what we're doing is, um, is for being that it's the first race of the year, and a lot of coaches want to get working for their athletes. What we're doing is at, at around 11.30, 12 o'clock, 
because the, the main schedule starts at one. We're going to run uh, 100 meters, men and women, and 100 meter hurdles, 110 meter hurdles will be run uh, the preliminaries. And the eight fastest will go to the eight final, and the second eight will go to a B final. So everybody will get a chance to run twice, which most coaches think is very important this time of the year in, the, in their preparation for, you know, for the athletes for our American championships, which will determine who goes to the Olympic Games. Okay. So, you know, I think it's going to be very exciting. It's going to be out there. I think we got some people that are really cracking and ready to go. They're kind of biting at the chips. I tell you, I've had a hundred phone calls. I said, we only have eight lanes on the track, fellas. We can't get all you guys on there. I said, well, if somebody cancels, please let me know, TC, because I'll be there. I said, wow. And, and, and in the last week, I think I got a hundred new friends because people want tickets. I said, you guys got to buy a ticket, man. Y'all just can't give away this. I can't give away the farm, you guys. I have too many friends in the business, you know? But, but it's really you know, a lot of interest in the event, you know, uh, from, you know, from Jamaicans to Trinidadians to Haitians. We have them from, from almost every Caribbean country. And Latin, we even have some Latin Americans coming in from as far back out as, as Colombia and, uh, and Ecuador will be here as well. So I think the whole Caribbean, South American belt is going to be well represented here. And I think that everybody's going to get a, a taste of some fantastic track and field action. Please come out and support us. Again, it's April 10th, Anson Stadium, Anson Sports Complex. Uh, the gates will open up at about 8 or 9 a.m. You can come in there and get, get a good taste. We have some vendors that will have some, some good old Rasta food. We'll have some jerk chicken and rice and things, man, you know, and so, <laughs> so on. So it's going to be live. I'll tell you, it's going to be a nice little party. Please come on out, folks. <laughs> You heard you heard that, Justin. You're gonna get a chance to get that heavy meal in before the race, man. That, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get on some of that jerk chicken, some rice and peas. I'm gonna, I'm like, not too much, because that means I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get big. I'm either do the shot put instead of the hundred meters, but you be ready to eat afterwards. So save me some of that food. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I have a lot of conversations with our city manager Vernon, and TC got a chance to meet with uh, Vernon Hargrave. And our vision for Anson Sports Complex is, is really years in the making. When we built the facility, it was only two in the world, ours and the Olympic Stadium in Beijing. Um, so um, now there's a few that have been built. So, and we've also added some training facilities. So uh, our vision for Anson Sports Complex is to be a year round training facility for some athletes that may be from Europe and Canada that may are looking for a warmer climate to chain, uh, train in the off season can have a facility to come to. So uh, we see ourselves having an event like the Miramar Invitational to, to rival that of the Penn Relays because we know that we have a lot of great athletes, our proximity to the Caribbean. Um, South Florida is just a destination place in general. So we know it won't be um, a bad draw to get people here as well as uh, tourists and visitors as well. So we're really excited about the prospects of, of what, what is um, to come. So um, as we get a start to wind down the, the conversation, I would like to um, ask, um, um, Ajay and Natoya, you know, we, uh, in the city of Miramar, we had two young protégés, uh, Khalifa St. Ford and Brianna Williams. I had Brianna Williams on a prior uh, conversations during Women's History Month. And um, so our female athletes and just athletes in general have seen um, uh, track stars be born right here in the city of Miramar and have gone on to, be, to become uh, professional. What advice would you give to young athletes that are running in um, um, in the, the AAU circuit and um, Optimus circuit that are competing as juniors? Um, what advice would you give them in terms of how to stay focused and to get to the pinnacle of the career that you all have been able to be blessed with? Start with you, Natoya. Well, when I was young, I've always see, you know, athletes competing. And I always tell myself that I want to make it to the Olympics. I want to be able to do well. So I train really hard. Like I, every time I go out there, I give it 100%. Sometimes my coach have to slow me down because, you know, I'm going too hard or too fast. So I'm encouraged, I'm encouraging each and every young athlete to just stay focused, you know, go for your dreams. It might seem like it's hard, especially the 800 training, it's really hard. And you want to turn back, but just keep pushing forward because 
in order for you to reach where you at, and everyone on here that you know have computer, they can tell you it's not an easy road. You have to start somewhere in order to reach the sky, and you just have to take it one step at a time. You will have a lot of persons around you trying to say, "Hey, do this, do that." You know, just focus, listen to your coach, because it's very important to listen to your coach and even have someone that you look up to, you can listen to them. Because once you start to do well, you have a lot of persons come around and they're going to be the the most, you know, I don't even know what the word to say, but they're going to seem like, you know, they're always there when they were never there before. But you just have to stay focused on, on your goals, on what you want to achieve in order to be successful. And as I said, just you got to eat right also. And you're going to listen to your mom. You're going to listen to your dad. You're going to just take it one step at a time because you have a long way to go. I'm 30 now. I've been running since I was 14. And I almost, you know, a lot of persons thought I would probably not be running anymore right, right now. But... It's because of my background. When I was in high school, there's certain things I wasn't doing until I reached college. So just take it one step at a time. Don't try to force things because you're young and you will reach whenever you, you're ready. And good luck out there to you guys. Awesome, awesome. Ajay? I just got to co-sign <laughs> everything that she said. <laughs> Gave you the, the drop the mic right <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I definitely can connect with um just whatever you do go hard that was something that my parents kind of instilled in, in me growing up I tried like every sport soccer softball basketball um I did or tour competitions like I just was all over the place with my activities and the running theme was always whatever you do to go hard at it and it was stumbling into track that I found that that was something I was good at. So that's always my advice to, you know, younger athletes or younger kids in general. Um, find something that you're passionate about that you like and just go hard at it. I think those are some words of wisdom from, you know, from some of our great, great um, examples of excellence. And uh, one of the questions I uh, forgot to ask uh, our, our 100 meter sprinters, you know, um, being a, a track athlete in high school and in college, you know, I knew what it take. I knew what it took to compete at a high level at that. Well, you guys are competing professionally with the fastest humans ever. So when you're a hundred meter sprinter, you can't be timid. I mean, I, I've seen some great personalities over the years in the hundred, and in each each great dominant hundred meter sprinter brought that level of swag to the starting blocks. So in one word, Justin, if you could characterize your swag and your mindset when you're getting down to get into those blocks, to be the first person to cross the tape, what would be that word that would describe your swag? I don't even know if I come with swag, but I, I know... Uh... <laughs> My whole mindset is different when it comes to competing and racing. I would say either fight or ferocious. You know, um, you only get nine seconds to represent who you are. Uh, I'll be swaggy afterwards. You know, victory laps is where you can swag at. But beforehand, it's it's about competition, getting the job done, and you got to focus. I only, like I say, you only get nine seconds. You don't get two halves. You don't get four quarters. I don't get a trip around. The, uh, I don't get two laps around the track to be able to gather myself to have a race strategy like these ladies here. But you, it's like a human drag race. That's all it is. So you have to stick to the plan. Whatever you and your coach have decided what the plan is, that's what you have to do. And you can't veer from the plan. Great. And you might? Mine would be uh, just being confident, you know, because I feel like if I'm at my best, I'm very hard to beat. So every time I go out there, I feel like you got to bring your best to beat me every every time you line up. And if you beat me, you just was the better man that day. And that's just how I feel. And here's a kind of a round robin question here. Outside of your events that you run and compete in right now, what is your favorite check event to run? That question came from one of our viewers on, on Facebook. So if you was to pick an event that's not your best event, what is your favorite event or your second best event or your second favorite event that no one would think that you would like to run? Starting with you, Ajay. 
Um, I like doing the 1500 kind of, sort of. I've liked it less as I've gotten older. I wish that I was a hurdler. I wish I was good at hurdling. Um, everyone in my family hurdles. My two sisters, they ran collegially. My mom, they all hurdled. I just didn't get that that gene. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's the coordination or what, but uh, those would be my two events. Natoya? Funny that she said hurdles, because I've been bugging my coach <laughs> about doing the 400 hurdles. <laughs> so it's really funny that she said that. I really like the 400 hurdles, and I wish that I would be able to do it one day. And my coach would stop saying that I he doesn't want me to do it. So the 400 hurdles, I really like that. <laughs> what about you, Mike? It would probably be the 400 because that's what I was good at at first, but I don't want to go back to it because training for that is, is too much for me now. It's too much, too many miles on this body. Hey, you, Justin. I mean, since the hurdles I've been taken twice, uh, I'm going to go with long jump. Um, you, you know, you see the. <laughs> You see the women and you see the men out there and they're going blow for blow. They have to sit and watch the other opponents have better jumps and then they have to come back, gather themselves. They have an even better jump. So it makes it exciting. When they're really on point, it's, it's really something to watch. I say deep, but it really talks about in terms of being you know, um, celebrities, professional athletes, you have a lot of not only children looking up to you, but adults, um, those who really are inspired by your performances and your athleticism. So uh, especially over this last uh, few years dealing with the pandemic, a lot of social unrest in our, in our, um, in our nation, um, what do you think is the role of athletes, or not necessarily the role of athletes, but you and your stardom and your influence, how, how do you, how have you viewed yourself and do you see yourselves as being a, a beacon or an example of, of helping our community not only heal, but to addressing some of the issues that have been um, acted out throughout the country? I, I think we all can probably remember when like somebody first asked for our autograph or when we kind of realized that, hey, like people look up to me or people are inspired by what I'm doing. And I know for me, that might have been like 18, right after I signed professional, it was an immediate switch of like a responsibility to be a good role model to um, just be a good example to those who come from a similar background, those who don't, and those who are behind me. I think the one thing that I kind of never tapped into that I think this whole last two years has kind of taught me is, is the importance of not just showing up and, and being a great example, but also being genuine and authentic and, and your real self. So being able to show people that, hey, yeah, this is what I do, but it's not something that I always want to do. You know, it's it's hard just being able to show different parts of life of yourself. I think it's helpful to everyone and to each other, to all of us to kind of take in from one another, uh, just that we're all human and that we're all struggling and we kind of have to just be there to support each other. And um, if running is the way that I can kind of connect and, and give that message, like I'm, I'm glad that I have that, that outlet. Great. Anyone else want to chime in? Well, cool. I know that, um, you know, as, 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 you know, oftentimes society and, and media may um, just force athletes to have to draw an opinion. And I think as we all would agree that, you know, sports is really one of those environments where you have so many people from all walks of life, race, religions, creeds that compete you know, and really set an example for society. And, um, and I think that, you know, being in that spotlight in your performances um, really shows um, a world, how we all can live together, we can compete. 
lay it all the on the track and then here this evening seeing the relationships you know you all have competed against each other for so many years and then you know behind the scenes you know like you know you can see that you all have these relationships outside of the track so it's really a, a great example and i thank you all for coming on this evening because our our residents and our viewers you know see you outside of the 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 stadium see you outside of the track and they see the human because at the end of the day all of us are human uh, uh, some of us are blessed with certain uh, sharing your talents with us um in the city of New York. so sean do you have any other uh before we uh provide an opportunity for our guests to um to uh final words Mayor Messam, you went in and out there, sir. So I, I think you're asking for us to um, get a round of the final comments from our, our, our athletes. Yes, if you don't have any final questions from the audience or yourself, um, we can um, get final words from our guests. Yeah, just, just one thing. And you know, Mayor Messam, every time we have a major uh, sporting, major sporting events like the NBA Finals or the Olympics or the Super Bowl um, or the Masters, um, you know, we we always have young people who start the, start a sport for the first time, um, and and I, I think one of the things that they need to know is the discipline of sports. So we see Olympic athletes on the track, and the athletes we have here today, we see them on the track, we root for them, we yell and we scream. But we, I, I would love for them to talk about the discipline of the sport. You know, after Saturday, you may have a parent who takes some young people there and they're like, oh, yeah, I want to go into track and field because I want to hear the roar. I want to feel the support. I want to hear people cheer my name. So can you talk about the discipline of the sport? Um, uh, Justin, we'll start with you. And, and then we have a question from, from um, our viewers. Can you talk about the discipline of the sport? What makes you get up and train every day? If you're tired, if it's cold, if you're hot, what makes you get up and do it every day? Um, it's just, a, for me, it's a competitive nature that I have. Um, I know that I'm, I'm good at what I do. I love what I do. I try to strive for perfection, you know. Um, but I would tell any young athletes that's going to watch this weekend, don't just watch for entertainment. Watch to be inspired. And all four, any one of us on this, on this webinar right now may not be um, one of your favorite athletes. You may have a favorite athlete that's not even running in this competition, but if you strive to be a collegiate athlete, a high school athlete, um, a professional athlete in this realm, watch, learn, study, feed that hunger so you can be a better athlete and you can learn from what we've learned and you can be even better. Awesome. Such great advice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Justin. Mike, what about you? What advice would you give? What makes you get up and go every day? Um, just to chime in off Justin, like some of those same things, just the hunger and the, the passion to just get out there and compete. I mean, just the energy and just the fans and just, just everything about doing the hundred meters just excites me just to get up in the morning and stuff like that. And then, you know, I got some little ones at home who, who, who like what I do too. So just getting up and just they're like, daddy, did you go work hard today at practice? You don't look too tired today, daddy. You got the energy. <laughs> so it's like, you know, happy medium with that. So, you know, I just want to go out there and make them proud as well, because I want to come on like, oh, daddy, you got smoke today. I don't want to hear that. So, <laughs> so, so they're yeah. your biggest cheerleaders and they keep you yeah, accountable. Yeah, they keep me on nice. my toes. Nice. Awesome. I love that. Ajay? What, what keeps you going every day? You're tired, but you have to train. What, what gets you up and gets you going? Ajay's buffering a little bit. Natalia, could you take that question? You know, first um, of all, my family, because, you know, I came from a background where it was not easy for us. And, you know, like, see how proud they are of me by just, even if I they are really proud of me. So just getting up every day, knowing that they are watching everything that I do, I just want to make them proud. And also, you know, I don't like to lose even when I'm not winning because a lot of persons think that winning is, is when you come first. But it can also be setting a personal goal 
And every day I get up, I like to set a personal goal in training when I go to a race. So, you know, just having that drive to know that I want to do better each day. And also to be disciplined in the sport, you have to sacrifice as well. And even though I'm slim, a lot of persons will think that, okay, she can eat whatever she wants, but I'm also getting older. So I have to watch what I put in my body um, as a 30 year old. And Mike and Justin, they already been 30, so they know what I'm talking about. So the older you get, <laughs> you know, you have to make sure that you eat healthy. And that is also, you know, a drive of thinking about my competition that I have to, you know, face. I have to ensure that I don't gain um, certain weight because if I'm at a certain weight, then I will run slower, even though I'm very small. So those things, you know, drive me to do better each day whenever I get up. Because sometimes you'll think for ice cream, but you can't eat ice cream. Like back in 2018, even though it was the last race for the season, I tell myself, I am not going to eat any ice cream until Continental Cup is finished. And as I finished running the 800, I went and buy some ice cream. But before that, I did not want to do that, you know? Because <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, oh, that's extra fat. You know, you can't eat no ice cream, even though it don't show. So you have to ensure that you, you are very focused on what you're doing and that you set your personal goals as well. Thank you so much for that. Um, and that's the discipline of the sport. You want ice cream, but not until after your race. We have two questions that came in in the chat, and I'm going to take I'm going to take um, two of our panelists to answer one question each, and then we'll do your final comments for today. Ajay, you you buffered a while ago, so you didn't get a chance to answer. So if I could put this question to you from one of our viewers, how do you prepare mentally before you start your event? So Are you muted, Ajay? Yes, I just am. I good? Okay, perfect. Go ahead. Um and. I guess it it starts months before you actually step on the line of just those last reps visualizing or thinking about, hey, when I'm super tired, this is what I'm gonna have to tap into. This is why I have to work hard. And then immediately closer to the race, like maybe a few days before, I'm just playing in my head how I want the race to go. And what am I gonna feel like when I get out? Uh, what pace are we coming through the 400? Of really just visualizing, um, kind of how the race is going to go and coming up with a, a couple different alternatives. Like if I don't get out good, how is it going to play out to just be comfortable with wherever I am in a race? Um, and then the day of, I make sure I get some good food in, um, take a nap and just get ready to go. Thank you so much. Um, so it starts way ahead of the race. You mentally prepare before you get on the field. Uh, Justin, would you take this one? It says, what advice would you give to parents whose children are interested in trap? Where does a parent start even? Um, so search for local grassroots, you know, camps, um, coaches that are in your areas that would cater to whatever your child is, is trying to compete in. And sometimes your child doesn't even know what they want to compete in yet. So take them out to be able to socialize and be amongst other athletes who have the common uh, like I guess, like-mindedness to be able to either figure out they want to be a jumper, a distance runner, a middle distance runner, a sprinter, you know, just because they see me run or they see Mike run or see Ajay or, or Natoya, like, doesn't mean that you want to be that event. Doesn't mean that you're built for that event. You may find out that you're the best triple jumper in the world or the best javelin thrower in the world. So find it, you know, as a parent, guide your child on this journey of discovering who they are. This is what they love. This is what they want to do in life, possibly. So nurture them and find little things along the way. When I got into track, my parents knew nothing about track. When I bought my jersey home for the first time, they laughed at me. They were the first people to laugh at me because I was the most laziest person that they knew. <laughs> but when they saw me compete for the first time, they knew that this is what I love to do. And they stood by me. They learned track and field with me, shoulder to shoulder. And ever since then, they've been to every championship with me. So as a parent, nurture your child and the best thing you do is learn what your child wants to know thank you so much justin and since you have the floor why don't we start with you any final comments for our viewers today 
We have one final question that says, what's your pre-race ritual? And I know we had the discussion before that, you know, you, ha you talked about what you like to eat and if it's a lunchtime race or a breakfast race. So if you could fold that into your answer, but any final comments to our viewers today who have tuned in? Pre-race ritual. I have yes. no, I, I have no <laughs> idea. I, have no, I don't know. Maybe Mike knows what my pre-race ritual is. We, be, we around each other so much. There we are. See? <laughs> I, I then he do this, then he uh, zip his, you know what I'm saying, his uniform there. a little bit, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> he walk back and forth, he pacing around and all that, <laughs> and then he'd be ready to run. I, I would think that um, I'm very anal when it comes to time management before my race. So I got to be on the bus at a certain time, I got to be in the lobby at a certain time, I got to warm up at a certain time, because I feel for whatever reason I'm going to miss this flight. So I'm not even at the airport, I'm at the meet, <laughs> but I feel like I have to be ready for anything that's going to happen be prepared i hate being late especially for flights and especially for meets awesome part of the discipline of your sport I, I appreciate that mike how about you any final comments for our viewers today and any of your pre-race rituals um yeah just come out and support us on saturday get your tickets on miramar.com please go there come support us uh first black meet director on the circuit then give him a round of applause for that so I mean, him just doing that you know he'd be happy about that and uh my pre-race ritual uh i like to watch movies and stuff before uh going to compete some motivational something like avengers or something like that to get me going or something to get me hyped before i leave you know the hotel make sure i have a nice little lunch and then i'm gonna get out there and do what i'm gonna do i like it i like it mike thank you so much Ajay, how about you? Um, any final comments for our viewers today and any pre-race pre, uh, rituals that you want to share? I'm looking forward to seeing everyone on Saturday and hopefully you'll be able to cheer a little bit louder knowing a little bit more about us personally. Um, and pre-race rituals, I don't really have many. I never wanted to have something that I had to do because just in case like I didn't remember to pack those socks or whatever the ritual was, I kind of crumble apart. The only thing that I do is I play I Was Here on repeat um, by Beyonce before I race. That's about it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ajay. And you have such great spirits. So we're we're rooting for you also on Saturday. Uh, Natoya, how about you? Any final comments today and any pre-race pre ritual? If you don't want to give away any of your secrets, but just tell us um, a little bit about what you do before. <laughs> But first of all, I want to say thank you for having me here um, today. It was really nice chatting with everyone. And to all the fans out there, come out and join us on Saturday. Come cheer for your favorite athletes because guess what? We're coming on to put on a show. Um, uh, Mr. TC, thank you for this event because trust me, we've been waiting to race, you know, and some, some of the stuff I do before I compete, like Mike Rogers, I like to watch movies. I'm a comedy person, so I'll watch comedy. Like, um, now I'm on Family Reunion. It just came out, so I'm on part three. So I'm probably at episode five. It's almost finished. So I try to find a lot of comedy to make me laugh because I love to laugh. And as you know this, we are talk to each other in the, in, the wrong, in the waiting area before we go and run because... You know, we can't just stand there looking nervous, you know, <laughs> so we speak to each other. And I also love gospel music, so I would listen to a lot of gospel music. Sometimes people say, oh, do you listen to gospel music? But it really refreshed my mind. And like some of the African gospel music, like Jerusalem, and now that's out, you know, that's my thing. And I'm, you know, doing a little dance to it and stuff. So, you know, <laughs> like... Uh, whenever I warm up, I dance and, you know, stay focused and just go there anyway. Maybe we'll ask the DJ to play that on Saturday um, and see how you do before the race just to get your limbs going. Um, <laughs> um, as long as I get to record that, I'm, I'm good. Um, Miss, Miss Gould, you, you have... You have a you have a fan here from from Jamaica who 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 tuned in online and they wanted to know besides the eight hundred what's another race that you like to run so that that final final question besides the eight hundred what other race do you like to run? Well, as I said, I would like to run the four hundred urban, but I cannot be able to run it. And like Ajay, I used to run the fifteen hundred. I would I run it 
last week, but I'm not a fan of it anymore. But I love 4 by 4 I wish 4 by 4 was a, you know, event that I can run all the time because I'm fearless whenever it's um, I'm going to run a 4 by 4 Like, I really love running the 4 by 4 But not the 500. Wow. That's nice how you identify your strength. I'm fearless when it comes to this. So, uh, Mayor Messam, it's your surf to, to, to wrap up before we give the final comments. Well, I really, really enjoyed this discussion, you know, um, it, and it, it's just great for our residents to be able to, you know, get a glimpse of the people, the persons, you know, uh, oftentimes, you know, as athletes, you know, folks, we're, we tend to see athletes just for their performance, just for their excellence. And, but behind the, the world record pace, the world record uh, performance of an event, it's a person. It's a mother, it's a father, it's a sister, you know, it's an uncle, a brother. And we like to expose and introduce to our residents, you know, the people um, that exist. Uh, we, we're so thankful and grateful for all of you. You know, we'll be praying for, you know, your success. We'll be praying that you reach all of your personal goals um, as well as your professional goals. And we thank you for taking the time. You could be doing anything. You know, you have a big meet coming up this week. Some of you who may be in town and some of you who will be traveling later this week. You know, we, we wish you traveling mercies as you come over. And one thing I would like to share with our residents and for our guests, you know, these conversations I've been having since the pandemic, I usually go out into the community and have these informal discussions with our residents. But when we had the pandemic, I brought it online and I invited guests like yourselves and, um, and to feature, you know, just important um, and, and, and pressing issues as well as lighthearted issues in our community. And when we have an event like the Miramar Invitational that is bringing the world to Miramar and some of the best athletes in the world to Miramar. How could we not be able to bring some of you in to have a personal and direct conversation, you know, with our residents and one thing that I gathered from this conversation is that each of you have your different walks of life, but you all have one commonality. You strive for excellence and you're very successful. And each of you in your comments that you say that none of those just happen by chance. It's about the work, it's about the dedication, it's about the commitment, it's about the love. And it just doesn't happen. You make it happen. So thank you for sharing with us on how you all have made it happen. And we wish you all the best. On, on Saturday and wish you a great evening. So now I'll just turn it over back over to Sean and uh, I'd like to say good evening and good night to our residents. We love you and we'll be back to give you more information and introduce you to some more wonderful topics in our next conversation with Mayor Massam. Sean. Thank you so much, Mayor Messam. We also want to re remind our viewers that the gates open at 8 a.m. this Saturday at the Anson Sports Complex. And just in case you're wondering where that is, it's 10801 Miramar Boulevard, and the event will be live streamed starting at 1 p.m. right here on our Facebook page at City of Miramar. Don't forget to wear your mask. You will be required to uh, wear a mask on Saturday, and social distancing will be adhered to. Also, just a reminder that the USA Track and Field and COVID-19 return to play guidelines will be followed. So we also have your safety in mind while we're while some athletes are preparing for world war three and you know we're getting ready to root for them all we want to make sure that when you come to the anson sports complex you are safe so thank you mayor messam just to remind folks you can get your tickets at miramarinvite.com and it was posted in the chat while we went through our presentation thank you again to our panelists we're rooting for you this saturday and i know we're going to have a great time Thank you, Mayor Messam, for bringing this forward, and thank you to our viewers for tuning in today. Please remember to visit us at miramarfl.gov slash track and field if you want to learn some more about this event. Also, we would like to say special thanks to our sponsors this afternoon. The event is presented by the Anson Foundation, and it is sponsored by Hazen & Sawyer, Kaufman Land Construction, United Data Technologies, or UDT, Dr. Barbara Sharif, who's a county commissioner and the president and CEO of Florida Pediatric Home Care. We also receive sponsorship from Dr. Angelo P. Throwers from MedSpa. 
Thank you again. We look forward to a great event this Saturday coming out. We may play Jerusalem. We'll get it going. We'll, we'll root for our athletes. <laughs> and uh, thank you again. Have a great afternoon and stay safe.